Hi all, this is Anjali and in this video, I'm going to explain you what random function is in C++, how it works and how it is used while solving output questions. Usually a question on output comes in question number one of your board exam where you have questions regarding pointers, arrays, strings and all. Out of all those output questions, there could be a question which uses random function where a set of outputs are given and you have to choose which output should be the correct output for the code. So we will be doing how to solve such questions in this video. First of all, we will start with the working of random function, like how random function works. So to use random function, the first thing is I must include stdlib.h. This is the standard library in which random function is available. Now to use random function, we write random and in brackets n. So if I write random n, the system generates a random number between 0 to n minus 1. So if I have written random 5, it will give me any number from 0 to 4. We use a function randomize so that when, every time you run your program, you should get a different set of random numbers. The random numbers should not be repeated till the time possible. For example, if I have to generate a number from 0 to 10, I should write random 11. So it should give me any random number from 0 to 10, that is n minus 1. So to have a random number from 0 to 4, I should write random 5. But what if I want a random number from 6 to 10? It is not starting from 0. I want a random number from 6 to 10. So for that, I can write random 5, which gives me 0 to 4 plus 6. Now the minimum value of random 5 is 0 and the maximum value is 4. If I add 6, it's added to both minimum and maximum value. So 0 plus 6 gives me 6 and 4 plus 6 gives me 10. So I get a value which is between 6 to 10. That's how random function works. Like if using random 4 gives me 0 or 1 or 2 or 3, any of these 4 numbers it could give me. But if I write random 4 plus 5, so if I add 5 to the minimum and the maximum range, I could get any of these 4 numbers. I could get 5, 6, 7, or 8. So that's how random function works. So I hope it's clear how random function is generating a number and how we can get a range which is not starting from 0 by adding some number to it. So if this thing is clear, you should go forward to use random function in the output question. Now this is the first sample question where we have stdlib included. We have randomized here. Then x is 125. Y is 99. A is calculated as random 3 plus 4. Now random 3 would give me 0, 1 or 2. If I add 4 to that, I'll get 4, 5 or 6. That means A can have 4, 5 or 6. Then B is random 2 plus 2. So random 2 gives me 0 or 1. If I add 2 to that, I get 2 or 3. So possible values of A are 4, 5 or 6 and possible value for B are 2 or 3. So I've got the possible values for A and B. Now if you look at the code, this loop for int i is equal to 0, i less than A, i plus plus. That says that this loop works for A times and what is it doing? It's printing m percent sign. That means for A times m percent sign should be printed. So m percent sign should come for either 4 times or 5 times or 6 times since a can be any of these 3 values. But if I check the outputs given over here, in the first output I have only 2 m percent signs means it cannot be one of the possible outputs. Similarly option 2 is also rejected so these 2 are out of the question. Now we are left with these 2 options. This has 6 ands, okay that's possible. This has 4 m percent signs, that is also possible. So we still have these two options available. The loop gets over, we come here. We are printing C out x. x is 125, okay. In this also 125 is printed. In this as well 125 is printed. So still both are the valid options. Now let's take the second loop. The second loop has i0, i less than b. So that means this loop works for b times and b could be 2 or 3. So either the star should be printed two times or the star sign should be printed three times. Now in this option, it's been printed two times and here it's printed three times. Still, both are the possible outputs. 
Then we come out of the loop and we print y. Y is 99. So 99 we have in both of them. That means option number 3 and 4 both are valid options. So thus we decide that option 3 and 4 can be the possible outputs of the given code. I hope you got it. How we have used random function in this? Fine. Otherwise you can just repeat the whole thing and you can get in a better way. If you are clear with this, let's move on to the next question. Now the next question says that we have a constant integer which is named as max and the value is 3 and we have included this in, and randomize is also there. Now we have a variable number. Number is assigned with 50 plus random max. Now random max, max is 3 which will give me 0, 1 or 2. So I can get, get 0, 1 or 2 which will be added to 50. Thus the value in number will be 50, 51 or 52. So only three possible values could be there, 50, 51 or 52. Now if you look at this code, P can be assigned with 50, 51 or 52. It's greater than or equal to 50, P minus minus. That simply shows that your number is decreasing by 1 every time till it reaches 50 and it's printing the number with a hash sign. So if it starts with 52, I should get 52 hash, 51 hash, 50 hash. If it starts with 51, I should get 51 hash, 50 hash. And if it starts with 50, I should get 50 hash. These can be the three possible outputs. But I need to tell out of these four, which is valid and which is not. So the first one is not valid at all because it has 53 and we don't have 53 in this. So 53 is not there. So option 1 is ruled out. Then option 2 and option 3 are not possible since they are printing the numbers in increasing order. And our loop is going in decreasing order. So these numbers cannot be printed. So we are left with option 4 that print is 51 hash, 50 hash. That is possible because P can be 51. And if P starts with 51, it will print 51 hash, 50 hash. So option number 4 is the valid option in this question. So I hope it's clear. Let's go to the next question. Now this question has an array of strings. So we have char color 10. This blank square bracket means we can have any number of strings. 10 means each string can have maximum of 10 characters. So I have red at position 0, blue at position 1, pink at position 2, and black at position 3. So that's my area of strings. Then we have a variable paint. Now this loop is working for 3 times and the value in paint is decided inside the loop with the help of random 2 plus 1 and whatever you have at this position in the array gets printed. Now random 2 will give me 0 or 1. Plus 1 will give me 1 or 2. So finally in paint I will be having either 1 or 2. Now at 1 in my array I have blue. At 2 I have pink. So whatever will be printed should be a combination of blue and pink because those are the only two positions we are getting in the variable paint. So option number 1 is a valid option because it contains blue, pink, blue. This one has red, option number 2, so it cannot be the possible output. This is the same as option 1 only, blue, pink, blue. This is possible. Option number 4 is blue, pink, pink. That is also possible. So in this case, option 1, 3, and 4 are the possible answers. Let's take another example. So in this example, we have an array, again, but it's an array of integers. So we have 25 at 0, then 20 at 1, then 34, 56, 70 to 63 at 2, 3, 4, 5 position. Now we have this variable my score, which is assigned score 2 plus random 2. Means I have to pick up a value from the array score and at which position we have to pick it from 2 plus random 2. Random 2 is going to give you 0 or 1. 0 or 1 plus 2 gives you 2 or 3. So that means either the element from position 2 will be picked or the element from position 3 will be picked. So at position 2, I have 34. At position 3, I have 56. And in the possible outputs, 34 is there. So option number 2 is the valid option. So you can see this is very simple. You just need to find out the value which random function might give. Accordingly, see which output could be the possible out output. So less efforts and the two marks for the question are yours.
Okay, for this video, this is our last question, which we're going to discuss for random functions. So in this, you could see num is 14, and here random num plus 7. That means random 14 will give me any number from 0 to 13, plus 7 will give me any number from 7 to 20. I have a number from 7 to 20 in this. Now the loop starts from 1 and it will go up to that number and we are just printing those numbers. Option 1 is not possible since it finishes at 3. This finishes at 5. Option number 3, that's also not possible because we are starting from 7. So the random number cannot have a value less than 7 since plus 7 is there. So any value which stops before 7 is invalid. 3, 5, 4. So 1, 3, 4 are invalid. Only option number 2 is possible. So we have to finish at 7, 8, 9, 10 or up to 20, any of these numbers. So 11 is one of this number in the range. That's why we can get numbers from 1 to 11. So that's how option 2 is a valid option in this example. I hope you understood how random function gives or generates a value and how you can predict that what could be the possible output of the given code. In case of any doubt, do write in the comment section. I will get back to you. And if you found this video useful, you could understood anything out of it, do like the video, share it with your classmates, share with your friends. And yes, don't forget to subscribe the channel. Thank you.